Good morning and Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Welcome to St. John Lutheran Church in Priestville on the 10th of May, the year of our Lord, 2020. Mercy, grace and peace to you from God our Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins before Almighty God and receive his absolution. God of our salvation, gracious and merciful God, we confess that we are a broken people who put ourselves before others. Too often we have not shared bread with the hungry, given the homeless a home, clothed the naked, and worked for justice among all peoples. We cry from the depths of our sin, O Lord, even as we put our trust in your word. Heal us by your grace, and take from us all that would separate us from your love. Amen. With the Lord there is mercy and full redemption. We are refreshed and renewed in the living water of Christ. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sin, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. We're going to sing the solid rock.
1 to 9, and selected verses from chapter 7. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it is called, and of the Syrians, and of the Alexandrians, and those from Silica and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in the heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of you prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the Righteous One, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law, as delivered by the angels, did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, but he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their garments at his feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response of Psalm this morning is Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. Who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets his prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Our second lesson is from 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 2 to 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long? And you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Heavenly Father, in these troubled times it is easy for our hearts to be troubled. Give us grace that we, knowing that your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life, will see your eternal power and divinity in your precious word and in the beauty of nature that surrounds us, and that we will put our trust in you above all else. Amen. Beloved in our Lord Jesus Christ, it was night. The preparation meal for the Passover was over. A meal like the disciples had never before experienced, nor ever would experience again. Their beloved rabbi had washed their feet, the feet of the young disciple John, the feet of loudmouth Peter, and what horror, the feet of Judas Iscariot. Iscariot had already left. They would see him again in the Garden of Gethsemane, where they were headed. Outside, it was dark in the cool April evening. Jesus was comforting his 11 remaining disciples. Three long years, three short years. Jesus had been preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He taught his disciples to pray. He had given them power to drive out demons, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to tell everyone who would listen, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus had shown them the way by being the way. The first 11 Christian theology students stood on the verge of graduating, but they did not know it. They didn't even know that they were Christians, let alone that they were studying for the ministry. There was a tremendously sad atmosphere surrounding their beloved rabbi that night, and they didn't know why. A few hours later, the twelfth one was going to rejoin them in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was going to greet the rabbi with a kiss to show Jesus' enemies whom they should arrest. But that was still a few hours off. Their hearts were troubled. The rabbi broke the sad silence and addressed his eleven followers. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. He also told them that he was going to prepare a place for them. But when he told them that they knew the way, Thomas could remain silent no longer. Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? His answer to Thomas was a cue for Philip. Lord, show us the Father, that will be enough. A few hours later began the longest, most painful night in the whole of history. The church year is celebrating the 50 days of Easter, the season that lasts until Pentecost. Now, in a previous sermon I had said 40 days. It is 40 days from Easter Sunday until Ascension and another 10 until Pentecost. But those 50 days are the season of Easter. The church is celebrating. Celebrating? Really? Would that you were! 
frustrated, confused, and sometimes even broken. You and I easily ask the same question as Thomas did. Only we do it in 21st century terms. What are we supposed to do? What does God expect of us now? As a rhetorical question. Not expecting an answer from a God who does not speak. Actually, God does speak. But you don't listen, do you? I don't listen, do I? It is far easier to, as the old Navy ditty goes, when in danger or in doubt, run in circles, scream and shout, than to go on your knees and prayerfully seek God's guidance in God's Word. And as we know from the history of Naaman the Syrian, we sometimes expect God to do something spectacular. Immerse yourself in the Jordan River seven times and you'll be healed of your leprosy, Elisha told him. And he was furious. Eventually, he did as he was told and he was healed instantly. You expect a mighty display in the heavens. But that still small voice comes to you unexpected. And if you neglect God's word, unheard and unnoticed. O oh, ye of little faith, the law condemns you. Like Philip, you want to see where God is in all this. Show us the Father. Do you not believe that the Son is in the Father? And the Father is in the Son. Do you not believe that the Father and the Son are one? You don't see God at work. You don't see that God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You don't see that the Lord Himself is your salvation, that He is your shield and defender, that He is your very life. You don't see, do you? O oh, ye of little faith, the law condemns you. The first Maundy Thursday in history was nearing its end. What could be sadder? What would be sadder was to see their beloved rabbi being accosted by a mob with sticks and stones. What would be even sadder was to hear the crowds shouting, Away with him! Crucify! Crucify him! Yet more terrible, compounding their sadness, was seeing the one in whom they had hoped even for the wrong reasons, being crucified, dying, and being buried. And then, then God did something new, something that would make the ears of those who heard it tingle. Then was when God the Father vindicated His Son. Then was when God the Father acknowledged the innocence of His Son by raising Him from the dead. Then was when Christ, Christ rose again for your justification. Christ died for the sins of Thomas. Christ died for the sins of Philip. Christ died for the sins of you and me, and he was raised again for our justification. The living Christ, 
changed the name of Thomas, of Philip, and of everyone who ever believed and believes in him, believes in his name. Not only did he show Thomas, who had confessed that he had no clue what the way was, he had shown him the way. He made of him Saint Thomas. He made Philip, who just couldn't see the Father, into Saint Philip. But far, far more than that, he called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He has called you by name. You are his. That is why he had you baptized into his precious name, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. COVID-19 has changed a lot of lives in these past months. God, in his infinite mercy, gives you far more time than you had before. More time to prayerfully listen to him speaking in his word. More time to make a difference in the lives of others. More time to do the good works that he has prepared for you to do. You, being led by the Holy Spirit, know the way. Neither life, nor death, nor principalities, nor powers, nor viruses, nor politicians, nor anything can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you too shall be revealed with him in glory. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God the Father, believe also in God the Son, being led by God the Spirit. For those who are led by the Spirit are the children of God. That's you and me. Amen. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. As newborn infants who long for the pure spiritual milk, so let us come before the Lord seeking His mercy with confidence that His grace will be sufficient for all our needs. Almighty Father, everlasting God, Your Son has revealed You to us as a merciful Lord. Give to us Your Holy Spirit that we may believe in him whom you have sent, and do the greater works he has told us we will do in his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have promised to build up your church to be a holy priesthood, that your people might offer the spiritual sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving acceptable to you. Bless your church and bring all congregations back together again. Bless all pastors who proclaim Christ to us. Bless all church workers and those preparing for full-time church vocations, that your church may be supplied with faithful leaders and servants of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your power brought all things into being, and still you preserve what you have made. Bless our Governor-General, our Prime Minister and his Cabinet, our Provincial Government, 
and all elected and appointed civil servants, so that they may honour you and your purpose, establishing order and justice, encouraging virtue and protecting all life. Give wisdom and moderation to them in their leadership for the well-being of the nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Father, you have compassion upon the sick and those in need and have promised not to ignore them in their afflictions. Turn back the pandemic across the globe and give us relief. Bless the sick with healing, those who suffer with strength and patience, and the dying with peace. Hear us on behalf of those who have requested our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have established the home and bless those who show us your love. Bless all mothers and the children in their care. Bless all families and make their homes places of blessing and love. Where your word is spoken, forgiveness reigns and love is displayed. Give us good examples to inspire youth to all that is good and pure and to seek after these things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given us the wisdom of faith that through the Spirit we might know your Son to be the way, the truth, and the life. Bless all those who teach and all who learn, that the goal of our knowledge may be to know Christ and to make him known. Do not let your word be bound, but let it have free course among us. Preserve those in isolation from idleness, and instead let our minds be renewed in scripture and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Father, you are not aloof from the needs of this body and life, and you have called us to love our neighbor in need and give aid to the poor. Give us courage and faith that we may not fear sharing the resources you have supplied with those who live in want, especially the widow, the orphan and the unemployed. Let love be perfected among us to drive out selfish fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father of an eternal mercy, you have raised up witnesses in every age and blessed us with those who endured suffering and even death in faithfulness to Christ. We give you thanks for these faithful saints and martyrs, and we pray you to make us strong when we face the day of test, that at length we may be brought with them into the joy of your presence and the glory of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, God, for your goodness in hearing the prayers of your people and granting us confidence to approach your throne of mercy. Hear us now in the name of and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, both now and forevermore. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Hello, it's the Meyer family, and we are going to sing um, 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord, by Matt Redman.
receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.